Once again, your home play for tonight, pages 135 and 136 only. All right. Our objective for today, I can define and compute complex numbers. I can define and compute complex numbers. All right. So with that said, so you remember the concept for today, please? That is correct, complex number. So lock your toolbar and type in or write in the definition only without looking at your notes. You got 30 seconds. Ready, go. Copy and go. All right. Let's see. Correct answers on your screen. So numbers that have one imaginary number and one real number. Yeah, something like that. All right. Okay. And of course, you already know all the rest, like so. Yes. Okay. So yesterday we got into these, identifying the real number and the imaginary. Is that correct? We moved on to this one, this one, this one, and that one. And then we went to example two, doing the sum, difference, and product of binomials. Yes. From there, we did some more, and then I gave you guys the favorite one, which is this one. From there, I said, let's crank it up a notch. Example three, we got into imaginary and complex numbers. And, of course, the home play was about that and was a piece of cake, yes? All right. So that brings us to the next portion of our lesson, which involves electric circuits. Write that down on your paper, electric circuit. Now, I broke it down a little bit more than what the, uh, the curriculum presents because, once again, I found out that they wanted you to know all this just with one page of presentation. So I broke it down so that you guys can see the history part of it and whether they were going in regards to doing some of the math. Okay? Electric circuits. So today I'm going to talk about diagrams of electric circuits, all right? So let's say I came in and I said, students, guess what? I was at home and I came up with this device. It's very cool. And, uh, and it's an electric circuit. And let me show you the device. There it is. And then I show you what it does. I said, here's the battery right here. Here's the light bulb. And the positive goes here to one side of the light bulb. The negative of the battery goes to the other side. But in between, there's a, a switch. This switch, if I press down on this lever right here, and it makes uh, contact here, and makes the negative flow through, and then it would turn on my light. And you guys are like, Mr. Q, this is the greatest invention. Why don't you sell it with Q merch? So I'm all like, yes, so you guys are going to be my peons. So I'm going to bring little baggies, zip locks, and all the materials. We're going to bag them. But we need to give instructions to people that don't have me there to explain it. And I don't want to do a video because that takes too much and it's going to be more expensive. I want something simple. So I'm going to sketch this in a diagram. But first of all, why is this called a circuit, Mr. Q? Well, let's see. Current flows this way and that way, and it's all... Wait a minute. Doesn't it look like a circle? That's why it's called a circuit. All right. So let me show you a diagram that I would include in the little Ziploc bag for instructions. Look at it. Does that pretty much reflect what we just talked about? Let's see. Here's the battery. One side of the battery is what? Positive and it's going to the what? To the light bulb or the lamp. Let's see if it's true. Positive going to one side of the lamp. Yeah, there it is. What's the other side of the battery? Negative, going to the other side of the lamp, but in between there's a what? Switch. Let's see if it's true. Negative, going to the other side, and there's a switch right there. Does this reflect that? Pretty much, yes. 
This is what we call electric circuit diagram. We're going to be talking about these today. I just wanted to show you where it comes from. Well, this was something that was created or invented or discovered back in the 1800s. And as technology evolved, Ali, you're right over there? Yeah. As technology evolved, so has the electric circuit. Let me explain to you the degree as to how much technology has evolved. I don't know if you've heard in history or if you've heard throughout your life about the first man on the moon here for the U.S. It was back in the 60s. Can you guys picture that, that number of years, how long it was? Back in the 60s. Okay, back in the 60s. But picture a big rocket leaving Earth with the astronauts, and they got to the moon. Can you picture that rocket? Picture all the electronic devices inside of that rocket that they needed to get, you, get them all the way up to the moon. Are we there? Now check this out. Let me show you how much technology has evolved. All that technology in a rocket is found in your smartphone now. You're like, what? Yeah, that big old rocket that's the, that was the size of this building all the way over there to the, uh, to the end of the building in the parking lot, that big of a rocket with all the technology, now that technology we have in our smartphones. They're like, how could that be, Mr. Q? Well, with time, people have been compacting circuits to make them smaller, to eventually start including this. Imagine this, I shrink it, and I create another one, another one, another one, and all of a sudden I put them all in this right here. So I can put, I don't know, how many do you think I can fit if I, if I minimize them? A lot of them. That's where we get to this part. You're like, what? What is this with you? I just explained it. A lot of circuits in one. This is what a computer looks like. Does that make sense? Let me say, it doesn't look anything like what you showed us. Well, let me show you kind of what it looks like. Look, I'm going to zoom into this one. Does everybody see how there's a wire on this side and another wire on this side? So that means a circuit is going from here to here with a lot of stuff going in between. So how many circuits do you see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But are those the only ones going in that direction? No. Now look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's a bunch of stuff going on with that little chip. So what did they do? Now they were able to compress what I just showed you earlier into one chip. So now imagine a computer has a bunch of these and a bunch of those. All right? All of that is what's found in electronic devices. So, uh, can I get the people in the front row? Come get a front of each row. What I'm going to send out right now is what we call a resistor. See it and then pass it back so the other ones can see the same thing. That's what we call a resistor. Now, there's other components in computers and in electronics and electric circuits, but for right now, we're going to focus on certain ones. But the first one I wanted you to see is the one that's going around. That's called a circuit. Sorry, a resistor. I'm sorry. A resistor. So the first component I'm going to show you is a resistor. Don't copy this. Just pay attention. Now, you're saying, like, Mr. Q, this looks familiar, but I don't really... See the practicality of it? Let me show you the practicality of it. Let's see. Who's helped in the past put up uh, Christmas lights? Okay. Who in the past had something done, you messed around with them, and they told them, don't move them around because they're not going to turn on? Who, who all of a sudden messed up their Christmas lights? Yeah, all of you, right? And then to figure out your parents or whoever they were uh, helping you, 
they were able to fix it by replacing a fuse. Have you guys seen those fuses? Those of you that haven't seen them, it's like this. Check this out. It's like a little cylinder, and it's got a little glass window right here in between. And it's got another piece of metal at the end, like so. This is metal, this is metal. This is a little window that lets you know if the fuse is working. And inside the fuse, there's a little wire that looks like this. Look up. It starts like this, and then I'll start in, it starts zigzagging like this. Who's seen that before? Okay. Well, check this out. This is a fuse also known as a resistor. But look at the, the, how they make the, the little filament in the middle. It looks like this. You guys see it? Like that? Why do they do that, Mr. Q? Because it helps with the flow of the current. It slows down the current, you know, so that it can help protect it. You're saying, I don't understand, Mr. Q. Okay, so let's, let's think about, uh, Disneyland. In Disneyland, when you're making line for a ride, you don't go just on a straight line. Some rides you are, but then all of a sudden when you start getting close, what happens? You start zigzagging so you can fit more people and you can slow down the pace. Same idea. That's why for resistors, the symbol that we use in, elect in electronics is this one. Does that make sense? Okay. Next one. Look up, please. The next one is known as an inductor, and you're just paying attention right now. Check this out. I'm going to create an inductor right now. Here's my wire. Some of you aren't paying attention. And I'm going to wrap my pen with this wire. What I just created is an inductor. They're like, what does that mean, Mr. Q? What that means, if I was to connect a battery right now to this, there's power going through it, but the plastic of the pen doesn't allow the power from one side of the wire to connect to the other side. It just flows through it really fast. All of a sudden, it starts creating a magnet field. What does that mean, Mr. Q? That this becomes a magnet. You're like, what? Yeah. Go home tonight, get a wire. Get a nail or something, wrap the nail a lot with a coil like that, connect a 9-volt battery, and then get something that's metal and see if it attracts it. That's what we call an inductor. Now, what did I do in order to create an inductor? With what? Wrap it. So watch. Look at, let me take this out so you guys can see what it looks like. Can you see what it looks like over here on the shadow? Looks like a coiled wire, yes? That's why the symbol for inductor is that. Does that make sense? Yes, Mr. Q. And last but not least, the third one that we're going to be talking about is a capacitor. You're like, what is a capacitor, Mr. Q? A capacitor, let's see, I was only to, able to get one. Do I have it here? Oh, here it is. It's a little uh, cylinder that looks like this. It's a blue or silver one, like this. You can really tell. It has two wires. But what it does, energy can just go one direction, but it stops it from coming back. Here it goes again. Energy flows in one direction, but then it stops it from coming back, like this. How does it stop it? Like this. Goes one direction. But when it wants to return, it stops it. That's why the symbol for a capacitor is like this. Does everybody see how it stops it like that? That's why that's the symbol for a capacitor. So what are my three components that we're going to be talking about? Resistor, inductor, capacitor. Resistor, inductor, capacitor. What are the three? And you know the symbols, right? I already explained the symbols. All right. Well, let's see if you got it. If you were paying a lot of attention. Lock your toolbox. 
fill in that table, please? You got 45 seconds. Send it in. Copy and go. So once again, what are the three components? Copy this table. Resistor, there's a symbol. Inductor, there's a symbol. Capacitor, and there's a thing. Copy that, please. You got 45 seconds. And hold on to the resistors. You can turn those in at the end once we finish our lesson. I don't want you to take them and sell them on eBay or anything like that. Copy that. So once again, what are the three components that we're going to be talking about today? Resistor, inductor, capacitor. Resistor, does everyone understand why this is a symbol? Yes, because it's kind of like a fuse and that breaks when there's too much current. Inductor, does everybody understand why this is a symbol? Yes, because you wind the wire to create a magnetic field. And the last one, capacitor, because it does what? It stops the current from coming back. Okay? Now, Mr. Q, why is this so helpful for us? Well, it helps us read diagrams. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. For example, let's say I gave you this diagram and I asked you to label the circuit without looking at your notes. Let's see. What is this one called? So I would label that R for resistor. What is this one called? Capacitor. So I would label it C, which means this is an I for inductor. You see how it's very helpful to know this? Because now you can actually read the diagram, and it's going to help you for today's home play. Now, Mr. Q, what's this that's left over here? You don't have to label it on yours, but this one is usually the voltage going into the circuit. All right? Pretty simple, yeah? All right. Well, let's see if it's true. Yes. Okay, get another one. I'll get your phone. All right, so I showed you one. Here's another one for you. Lock your toolbar. Oh, yes. Lock your toolbar and label the parts you got. 40 seconds. Ready? Go. Copy that and go. One. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, not bad, not bad. Everybody see that? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like we got... Capacitor, capacitor, resistor, resistor, and inductor. Yep. Yes. Okay. Get another one or get your phone. All right. Let's try this one. Lock the toolbar. 30 seconds. <coughs> Label it and press send. And for those of you watching the video, you can copy this diagram. Copy that and label. All right, uh, RCRI, RCRI. All right, not bad. And one last one, yes. Lock your toolbar, 20 seconds. For those of you watching the video, copy and go. All right, looks like we got it, yes. Uh, let's see. There's two inductors, one capacitor and one resistor. Yes. So be careful. Uh, this person, I don't know who it is, but look how you see these are looping. That means these are inductors, and this is zigzagging, so this is a resistor. So they're different, so be careful. All right. All right. So now that we cover those, pay attention, please. I'm going to explain now electrical current. Pay attention, please, especially those of you that are that you were kids and you wanted to put stuff into the outlets. Oh my goodness. Of course, I don't have any of those here. All right. Electrical current. Electrical current is, is basically defined in two ways. There's either alternating current or direct current. And you're like, Mr. Q, what's the difference? Well, I'm putting it out in your terms. I'm pretty sure it happens to you that you get to a house sometimes and you have your turn. Can I plug in my phone? Even if it's not your house, right, you're always looking for juice. Do you worry about which direction you put the plug? No, you just go and 
juice up, right? So that means, says into this part, that means that you can either put it like this, or you can alternate it and put it like that, and it still works. The current that's in building that doesn't move, that's what we call alternating current, because either side could be positive or negative. Are we there so far? But what's the difference between that and direct current, Mr. Q? Direct current, if you were to take your phone and your charger and you plug it in somewhere and it works, it charges. But if you turn it around and you flip it, it will burn your phone. Because direct current only allows one side to be positive and the other side to be negative. It doesn't alternate. You're saying, whoa, well, where does that happen to you in your car? You're like, wait a minute. Our car has, cur yes. So let's see. Most cars have a, a cigarette lighter adapter. It has a cigarette lighter. Most of them, yes. Most of us take that off and put a little charger for our phone. Well, guess what started happening? In the past, sometimes the wires in the car will get messed up and the polarity change, and guess what that did to your charger cable? It burnt it out. Well, guess what dealerships started doing? They're like, man, these people don't know. So we're going to start installing USB ports. You see what I'm saying? And that took away all the extra messing up of the cords and the charging stuff. Because even both phones messed up. That's the difference from one to the other. So what can we conclude? That AC current is what's on buildings or that stay in a certain place, which is mostly homes and buildings. So what is DC current, Mr. Q? It's a mobile current, such as car batteries, aren't they mobile? They go with you. That's 12 volts batteries. How about your phone? Your phone uses anywhere from 3.3 .3 to 9 volts. That's a mobile. How about, let's see, I'm going to take you back in time. Remember the uh, iPods. The iPods with the music, those require about 6.5, yeah, 6.5 uh, volts to charge. All that's mobile is direct current. Anything that is not is alternating. All right. Now, how do we measure current? It's called impedance. Impedance is the amount of current that goes through a certain circuit. Impedance is the amount of current that goes through a certain current, I mean a circuit. Now, how do we measure or what unit of measure do we use for impedance? It's called an ohm. There was a scientist that discovered it that it can be measured ohm. His last name was what? Ohm. So guess what letter we use for measure? You're like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like an O. I know, it's a Greek letter, omega, which is O. And that's the symbol that we use for ohms. So now, how does that help us, Mr. Q? Let me show you. Look up, please. So, Everybody wrote this down, yes? Yeah? Now, this could be converted into mathematics. Here it goes. A resistor can only give us a positive real number. So you know what I just said? A positive real number. An inductor translates into an imaginary number where B is greater than zero. What does that mean, B greater than zero? What numbers are greater than zero? Positive. That means that for an inductor, the number is going to be an imaginary number positive number. A capacitor B cannot be more than zero. It has to be less than zero. So what does that mean? A capacitor is going to give us a what? Negative imaginary. That is correct. So how does that help us, Mr. Q? Let me show you. Look up, please. So here's the table. Here's the circuit. And I'm going to ask you to help me with the impedance. Don't copy this yet. Just help me with the impedance, which means the amount of current going through. So according to the resistor, it has to be a real number. Where's my resistor? Right here. It's 4 ohms. So what would I write here? Positive 4. Only a real number. 
Let's look at the inductor. The inductor is going to give us a what? Imaginary positive. So where's my inductor? Right here. So this would be what? 3i. That is correct. Which means that my capacitor is going to give us a what? Negative. So here's 5 ohms. So this would be what? Negative 5i. There it is. Did we follow? Good. Okay, because you're going to do one new show. Copy this table down here and copy the diagram and fill in the impedance of that diagram. So you don't have to copy this one up here because you already have this and I explained this. So just copy this and fill in the impedance. Copy and go. All right, here we go. So what is the resistor, everyone? <laughs> Inductor. So an I and capacitor. Negative 10 I. All right, we got this, yes? All right, so now that we know how to translate that into numbers, look at this one, the last one, so I can move on because we need to finish the last part. So what is the resistor? 5, inductor, 8 I, and capacitor, negative 7 I. Okay, we got this. So then we get to this part. Look up. Resistor. Resistor, resistor. 9, inductor. 7i capacitor. Negative 5i. That is correct. Okay? Alright. And lastly, copy this uh, formula. This is to find out the voltage going through a certain component. To find the voltage, they, we need the current in amps, and we need the impedance of each component. Current in amps, and impedance of the component. All right. Okay. So if I was to give you this formula and I was to give you this diagram, I need to find out how much current is going through the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. So check this out. They need to give us the current in amps. So what is the current for this formula? 24 plus 12i. So here's a table. Look up, please. I'm going to show you how to do the first one because we don't have time for the rest. The resistor, what is the impedance? 4. Inductor, 3i, and capacitor, negative 5i. So this is how you find out the voltage going through each one. V equals i times z. All right. So what does that mean, Mr. Q? So what is the voltage that they give us, or the current in amps, 24 plus 12i. What is the impedance for this resistor? 4. Distribute, distribute. So my voltage going through here is 96 plus 48i. And that's how you compute the voltage. Copy that, please. As you're copying that, I'm going to do the other one so you guys can have them as reference. V equals I times Z. So what are you saying, Mr. Q, that they're going to give me the amps? Yes, they're going to give you this red part, current in amps, and it's going to be the same for all of them, 12I times. So what is the uh, impedance for this one? 3I, distribute, distribute. That gives me 72i plus 36i squared. Can we leave this as 36i squared? No. Tell you never what we need to do at the end here. Substitute and simplify. So this is 72i plus 36 times what? Negative 1. So this becomes... 72i minus 36. How good one, guys? Is there a home play? Once again, only two pages for tonight. Pages 135 through 136. There is tutoring. It's free. Yes. Our good one. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.